A typical new season at Sunflower Land would mean new NFT items, new crop, new million chicken, and new mini game, new NPC, new task, and so on. Well, if you think that's a lot of new stuff for a season, you're about to get really overwhelmed because this is the biggest season yet at Sunflower Land. Hey, my fellow fake online friends, welcome back to another video on Sunflower Land. My name is RV, I'm an active Sunflower Land player and I've successfully finished the last season at the fourth place and minted the most valuable NFT, the Ancient Rod. Honestly, I think $300 for Ancient Rod is a little bit expensive for me, but you know, price is not always rational and it's all supply and demand and who knows, the NFT might become more valuable as the game progresses. So in this video, I'll be sharing with you my game plan for the new season, how to get maximum seasonal tickets, which NFT I will be targeting and also I'll reveal every single collection item and let you know my honest opinion about them. So whether you plan to play competitively casual or casually competitive, my goal is to help you make up your mind for this season by giving you all the essential information on the new contents and features that you must know to win in this season. So let's dive right in. Season Intro this season is known as the Spring Blossom season. It was released on 1st of February and it will last for 3 months, all the way until the last day of April 2024. The season was introduced together with one of the biggest release in Sunflower Land history, the Island Upgrade feature. The new seasonal ticket is known as Tulip Bulb. Yes, you can now throw away all your once precious mermaid scales if you still have any left for some reason, and much like the previous season, there are 5 main ways to earn Tulip Bulb. Number 1, completing deliveries for NPC. Number 2, Hank's daily chores, which was said to be brand new but so far not really. Look, we have a cooked 3 carrot cakes on day 2 of the season and I didn't even have space for the bakery building at first. Number 3, Bird's Obsession. This season, we should expect more non-tradable collection items instead of some expensive NFT from the secondary market that is according to the team. Number 4, you can also get bonus Tulip Bulb from crop harvesting, the drop probability will depend on the cooldown duration of the crop that you harvest. Number 5, this is new. Every week, the new NPC Poppy at the Pumpkin Plaza will be asking for a specific flower in exchange for 50 tulip bulbs. Wait, what? What flower? Where do I buy them? Where do I get it? I know, patience, I'll break it down for you later. Now look, if you're somewhat super new to the game and whatever I've just said makes no sense to you at all, I will leave the document links to each of these features down below in the description for you to figure out on the how-to. Or you could watch this video that I've made for the last season for some details because the season Seasonal tickets earning methods are more or less the same. Lastly, we have a seasonal banner. I hope you've purchased it at a discounted price, otherwise you can still buy it now if you are interested in getting these benefits including a 25% SFL discount on seasonal items, bonus seasonal banner to place at your farm, bonus seasonal wearable airdrop, this is usually a onesie for your bumpkin, bonus seasonal tickets, super important for the seasonal race, and of course an amazing additional 10% experience for your bumpkin. An additional perk that's not mentioned here is that the current seasonal banner holders will usually get an additional discount for the next season's banner as well. So that's something to consider. For me, it's no brainer to get one but you can still participate in the season without the banner of course. Flowers, honey, and bees. Let's crack this one. First of all, flowers are grown in the flower beds, not on your usual crop plots. They will also be available at a second expansion after you upgraded your island to Petal Paradise. Basically, you have to buy flower seeds from the seed lady, crossbreed it with a crop or flower of your choice to get a specific flower outcome. The sun petal seed would take one day to grow, bloom seed would take two days, and lily seed would take five days. You can of course check the new flower tab in the Sunflower Land Codex to track your progress. You can find the crossbreeding clues from the game itself, for example, the three pages that you collected from the Pumpkin Plaza, but the last season has proven that the best source to go to to figure all this out is the Sunflower Land community. The community data will be collected and shared in Discord, check out the flower combination codex in the Sunflower channel, or eventually somewhere at sfl.world, I believe. No joke, the Sunflower Land community is super selfless in sharing their findings. You don't really see this with many other Web3 gaming community. Overall, I would say that the recipe cracking part is more less the same with the fishing game, except for it's not RNG based because you are always guaranteed to get a specific flower with a specific seed plus crossbreed material. In the other words, it's just a matter of time that everything is eventually figured out. Remember, figuring out the flower codex is important because you can trade a specific flower that Poppy asks for every week in exchange for massive 50 tulip bulbs. The best part about growing flowers at your farm is that you can now produce honey. 
which is another new resource that can be used for cooking, deliveries, and potentially fishing chum in the future. And as long as you have flowers planted at your farm, the bees will collect the honey automatically. Here's all you need to know about honey production. The production will stop when the flower is fully grown or when the beehive is full of honey. Notice I say when, not before. This is because if you harvest your honey only when it is full, which looks like this, you have a chance to trigger a bee swarm effect where all your current planted crops will receive a plus 0.2 boost. But of course, you can harvest it anytime at your convenience too if you don't care about the boost. So at this moment, it seems like beehive can only fit up to one honey and it will take 24 hours to do so. So I guess if you want, you could time the harvesting with a few other game resources that share the same 24 hour cooldown period like gold and creamstone to make it easier. While the team mentioned it before that there will be multiple beehives and flower at some point, I'm guessing at a 6 or 7 expansion, but to a maximum of how many beehives is unknown at the moment. Island upgrade, paddle paradise. As the saying goes, to upgrade or not to upgrade, that is not a question. Of course you want to upgrade. I know they say it's optional, but I really see no reason to not upgrade at all. First of all, with the upgrade you get access, new gameplay contents, features, and resources, plus a new cool genome known as the Blossom Beard that gives 10 additional experience boost. On top of that, the initial island expansion at Petal Paradise are much cheaper than the previous ones. I've mentioned it in one of the videos that I thought the team would consider to make progression much easier for the new players, hence the cheaper cost. So if you do upgrade, you will get a refund of the resources that you used for expansions previously. Really nothing to lose there. So I'll say upgrade as soon as you can because you will need to collect new resources that's only available on the new island for the later expansions. Unless you have the Grinx's hammer, you'll be stuck at this expansion for 3 days because it requires 3 cream stones to complete. Overall, the island upgrade is a much, much anticipated feature and I've been covering the updates and progress here at the channel since the team announced it. In case you missed out on how it works, here's some of the quick recap and some tips for you on the upgrade. First of all, do harvest everything before moving to the new island. This is because when you migrate to the new island, all your crop plots, trees, gold, iron, stone nodes, and chickens will be stored back in your inventory chest, so no point leaving unharvested produce. Number two, don't upgrade your island until you finish all the chores and or deliveries of the day you choose to upgrade. This is because as you can see, the new island will give you much lesser space to work with and it is always better to harvest the 1000 sunflowers etc before you move to that tiny island. Number three, as soon as you upgrade to the new island, place all of your NFT with farming boost inside the bumpkin house to save some space. Now, as long as they are not AOE item like the Emerald Turtle, which only affects a certain area, the boost will work just as fine from the bumpkin house. Number four, do not place all the trees yet. Now that is of course as long as you have sufficient wood for your daily farming needs. This again is for the obvious reason that the initial space on the island will be limited. And because I'm an idiot and I forgot you cannot actually remove the trees to store them back to the inventory chest, I actually did this mistake myself and now I'm officially diagnosed with claustrophobia. Number five, multiple bumpkin feature is here. If you've already have an additional bumpkin in your wallet, you should be able to exchange that for a farm hand coupon that can be redeemed for your second bumpkin on the new island. Place the additional wearables with boost on your second bumpkin for more farming buffs. Remember that the same exact boost from the same wearables will not stack. For example, you can wear green amulet on both bumpkins and expect the effect to double, but you can equip a green amulet on one and a carrot amulet on another and they will both be working. If you haven't moved the additional bumpkin to your wallet yet, I believe you can still do it now or if you prefer, you could just buy an additional farm hand with 15 block bucks. Number 6, after you've discovered the flower bed, don't plant the long hour flower just yet. Again, I screwed up. While waiting for the flower recipe to be gathered and updated by the community, I think it's best to experiment with short cooldown flowers like some petal seed so that you won't get stuck for 5 days with the same wrong flower planted and miss out the flower delivery for poppy, which will again cost you 50 tulip bulbs. Number 7, mint the new natural resources on time. This is because you will need the new cream stones for land expansion and by default, one cream stone can be harvested every 24 hours and if you mine it 
it five days in a row, you will receive three cream stones on day five. Sunstone, on the other hand, can be mined every three days and will be depleted and gone after 10 mines. It was mentioned before that both cream stone and sunstone will be used for crafting specific items. Both new natural resources will require the new gold pickaxe to mine. Number eight, unfortunately, if you have the mineral bot NFT, it will not boost the new stones because apparently they're not classified as minerals they are known as gems instead the emerald turtle also won't be working with the new stones this has been confirmed by the team number nine the animal legacy skill won't be working with the honey production this has been confirmed by uh, me. Okay, allow me to rant a little bit here. I can understand why animal legacy skill won't boost the fishing because fish is not considered as animal produce. It's just animal that you caught and found in the sea. But come on, bee produces honey. Now try to argue with that. RIP to my animal legacy skill. So that's about it for the island upgrade. What's currently missing and pending from the island upgrade features include increased hoarding limit. I'm not sure if this one has been implemented yet or is it even still part of the plan. Previously, the document said there will be uh, plus 0.2 crop totem boost. I believe this has now been replaced by the plus 10% blossom beard for experience. Reputation system that's supposed to give us these perks like reduced withdrawal attacks, bonus rewards, restricted areas and special events, bonus wearables, collectibles, extra upgrade badges and symbols are not implemented yet too. Bonus skills which should come with the entire skill revamp in the future. It's also not part of the upgrade here. And the team previously mentioned that there will be new fish coming in this this season as well but maybe it's just not released yet for now so yep that's about all that's missing if we were to compare it to the official document but hey be grateful we already probably have too much to handle for now seasonal nfts and collection as usual, this season comes with a lot of cool items. Some of them are items with boost and some are just rare aesthetic cosmetic items. First of all, behold this season's mutant chicken, Grim Paxter. Will you look at that? This is supposed to give you plus 0.1 cream stone, or the best getting it. It seems like there will be no seasonal items available at the blacksmith for this round. Frankie is also out of the game because Stella seems to have monopolized the pumpkin plaza and has upgraded her place to a mega store. It looks like all the items you can see now are only available for a month and the next month items are not revealed yet. It does make it a little bit harder to plan on how to distribute your resources evenly to get these items. But that's all we can work with now. First off, you have the Creamstone Armor. Just collect 10 Creamstones in exchange for plus 0.1 boost. I definitely will be going for this one. Queen Bee Crown, 25 block bucks. Seems amazing too. 75 SFL for a Daisy T. 200 Tulip Bobs for a Beekeeper Suit. I definitely will skip this one. 37.5 SFL for a Sunrise Bloom Rock and 100 Tulip Bobs for Flower Card. Again, anything to do with Tulip Bobs I'll probably skip because I want to aim for biggest price of the season. Of course, the most anticipated items are from the Hammering Harry at the auction house. You can check the full list of items in-game or at the official document or at sfl.world with some details, whichever you prefer. I've also made a picture here to help us to visualize this a little bit better. Let's look at them one by one. First of all, the collectibles and wearables without buffs include the blue blossom shirt with 50 supply 25 each for sfl and tulip bulb auction pretty cool shirt go for it if you want to blossom royale a decoration collectible with 140 total supply split among three different auctions and propeller hat again a cool looking hat with 150 supply not much to really talk about here if you love the art and are a collector go for it and now what most people care about the most the nft items with boost I'll break them into three major categories here. The flower buff NFTs, honey buff NFTs, and the creamstone buff NFTs. First of all, let's look at the flower buff NFTs. Starting from the bottom, we have Hungry Caterpillar, supposed to give you free flower seeds with 300 total supply, 100 for SFL auction, 100 for Tulip Bob auction, and 50 for Block Bug auction. For me, this is a nice to have NFT. If the SFL and Block Bug auctions are not too expensive, then I will go for it. If you are a very chill player and you want to target it with your Tulip Bobs, go for it as well. Essentially, on the utility value wise, say if you plant one flower a day, this NFT would save you about 3 SFL per month. While I understand that there'll be more flower beds and beehives later and it'll be more valuable, but 
Hmm. Okay. Next, let's look at the hummingbird. It will give you 20% chance of getting a plus one flower. Total supply is 300, splitted among two tulip bulb auctions and one SFL auction. If you only just want to go for this item, do make sure that you try out at the first tulip bulb auction, which is scheduled on the 11th day of the season. If you do get it, then I guess you can just cruise and chill through the rest of the season, you know? Play casually that or target another mid-tier NFT this season and keep grinding. Last one in the flower category is the flower crown. This will give you 2x flower speed and it has only 100 supply. 50 for block block auction and 50 for tulip bulb auction. It would be super cool to pair this with the other two flower NFTs to get the maximum flower production. In my opinion, at the current stage of the game, getting flower boost is less appealing because there is very little use for flower as of now. Even though you might need them for gifting when Bumpkin relation is introduced down the road, I still think that you would do alright without any flower boost. However, if there's some progression quest in the future where you can unlock some NFTs by completing the flower codex, like the fishing quest, then I believe the flower NFT will be more worth it to get. For now, I'll put this at the back of my mind and snipe them from the block bucket SFL auction if they are within my budget. Moving on to the honey buff NFTs, first we'll look at the Hornet Mask. It will give you 2x B Swarm chance, 300 supply. 150 for tulip bulb auction and 150 for block bulb auction. Again, this one falls under the nice to have category, but if you didn't care enough for the bee swarm effect to begin with, I guess you can pretty much just ignore this one. If you are a chill player, this will be a nice one to aim for. Next, we have the queen bee. It will give you 2x honey speed with a total supply of 200, 100 for SFL auction and 100 for block bulb auction. It's funny because this can only be attained through block bulb or SFL, not tulip bulb. That's actually quite questionable for me. I wish they would allocate some supply for tulip bulb auction. After all, it's really a cool buff to have. In fact, this is actually very tempting for me to get. In my opinion, if you want some top seasonal NFTs and you do not want to fight the whale game, this is the one to pay attention to. And now let's compare this one with the Honeycomb Shield. This will give you 2x honey production, 100 total supply, 50 for block bulb auction, 50 for tulip bulb auction. There's no doubt that this is the most valuable item in the honey category judging on its supply number. But I don't necessarily think that this is better than the Queen Bee. Essentially, the outcomes of the 2x honey versus 2x honey speed are the same. You get 2 honey per day. And even though with the honeycomb shield 2x honey boost, you can save the effort of an additional click to harvest each day, the queen bee's 2x honey speed boost will give you an additional chance to trigger the bee swarm effect. So I would likely go for queen bee for the utility itself, but for value speculation, I guess honeycomb shield then. The choice is yours or you know, why choose? Just get everything, eh? Finally, on the Creamstone buff NFTs, let's look at Creamstone Amulet. 20% reduction on Creamstone speed with a total supply of 500. So that should be an easy one to aim for. This essentially means 19 hours and 12 minutes of cooldown time for Creamstone instead of the original 24 hours. The fact is I always find speed buff like this a little annoying because you will still end up mining the stone about every 24 hours because most of the time, the 19 hour cooldown will be over while you are sleeping. For me, a better speed buff will be reducing it all the way down to 16 hours so that you can mine it before going for your 8 hour sleep cycle. I know, I know, who sleeps for 8 hours, sleep is for the week, blah blah blah. I'll admit I'm weak, okay? In fact, I'm super weak. I need like 10 hours a day. Thank you, sleep apnea. And finally, the Creamstone Hammer. It will give you plus 2 Creamstone on the 5th consecutive mine. So if I understand this correctly, instead of getting 3 Creamstones on day 5 of your back-to-back -back mine, you will now be getting 5 Creamstones. It has only 100 supply, 50 for a block block auction, and 50 for tulip bulb auction. Now the way these two different auctions are scheduled, it's real fun. If you're rich and you want to pay for it, make sure you get it on the day 5 of the season. If not, just grind all the way for 2.5 months to stand a chance to get it. Your choice, of course. So as of now, for me personally, I'm struggling between the Honeycomb Shield and the Creamstone Hammer. We know that they are of the same supply number. Don't quote me on this, but I think these two resources will likely be tradable too after the season. Honey does seem to have more utility over Creamstone as of now, but Creamstone will probably be the most scarce resource if you don't count the Sandstone. It's hard to choose, really. So here's my plan. 
I'll do my best to grind for the maximum amount of tulip bulb as usual. And by the 9th of April, the Honeycomb Shield Tulip Bulb Auction Day, if I were among the top 100 players on the leaderboard, I would mint the Honeycomb Shield right away. But if I were among the top 50, then I would go for the Crimstone Hammer, which will happen 3 days after that. Alright, that's all about the seasonal collection. And hey, don't forget there are many ways you can plan for this. If you're a maxi and you want to have them all, consider to try all block box and SFL auctions and mint whatever you didn't get with your tulip bulbs. Of course, if you don't mind missing out certain items, list down exactly what you want and maybe consider pair the same category NFT together where you can focus on grinding for one and pay for the other with block box or SFL. And of course, don't forget that you can always get them at the secondary marketplace after the season. So don't be greedy. Keep your plan simple and focus on just one or two NFTs to be obtained with your tulip bulbs and you should be good. Let me know which item you will be aiming for to win with your tulip bulbs for this season in the comment section below. I'm really curious how divided we are on this. Also, make sure you mark your calendar for the items that you want to bid. Imagine having enough tulip bulbs but actually missing the dates. Alright, I hope that's pretty much all you need to know to nail the season. If I do miss out any important stuff, please do ask me or let me know down in the comment section below. Finally, here's some additional tips for all of you who watch until the end. I do practice this myself and I believe these habits are the reasons for my win in the previous seasons. Number one, do check sfl.world and make sure you complete everything at the end of each day. Make that a habit for one simple careless mistake. All of the three months could cost you the most valuable seasonal NFT that you wish to get. Number two, do take advantage of the rapid root fertilizers. I hope you've seen my video about front running the seasonal race using this strategy. If you do, you probably would have been saving up fertilizers since last season. I have about close to 700 now to spam. The key is to front run the other players as early as you can so the competition can be set early in the season. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, then you must check out this video before everyone else figure out the trick. Lastly, if you're going for any of the rarest seasonal items, make sure that you schedule your harvesting according to your lifestyle. Plan longer crops if you do know that you'll be sleeping or be busy for the rest of the day. Set some alarms to remind you to harvest. You know the basic simple stuff, but it's the basic simple stuff being done consistently for 3 months that makes the real difference on the leaderboard. Every season, we saw players who missed the top prizes by 1 or 2 seasonal tickets and that is so painful to even watch. So make sure you don't be that person. I guess in short, the most persistent players will always have the higher chance of winning. Extreme RNG cases aside. Overall, I think this season is very well balanced in terms of the openness of the items which makes it a little difficult to decide which one to go for of course. But it also means that more people will have a chance to get whatever they want and hopefully that will result in more players playing actively this season. I think the team totally nailed it for this round. There were some hiccups at the launch day but it was quickly resolved. Every beginning of the season, there were always some complaints about the season mechanics but as far as I'm concerned, the overall community seems to be quite happy and content with this one. So so that's all from me. I wish you best of luck for the awesome spring blossom season. Please subscribe and turn on the notification bell because I'll be making videos for the upcoming seasonal changes and updates too. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.